Greetings to all of you. And of course, as always, it is a distinct honor of mine to welcome you to this People's Movement platform. Thank you so much for taking the time to join the broadcast. And as soon as you do so, please let me know whether you can see and you can also hear clearly so that we know about the quality of stream that's reaching you. It is a delight. It is always a distinct pleasure for me to interact with you, for us to interact with you and interact with each other. There, there is a refreshing wind that's blowing across Guyana and nations of the world in reference to the Guyanese who are away, or we say in the diaspora. There's a refreshing wind called the People's Movement. And I'm refreshed because of the fact that people have begun to understand the power, the value, and the strength that they have, they possess in reference to this movement. We must be able to. It is imperative that we're able to stand united, to stand in reference to the strength that we all possess as a people. With understanding, we must be able to interact with each other to ensure that we're responsible one to the other for that which we share in reference to what we call information. The crux of our existence has to do with educating, informing, mobilizing, strengthening ourselves as people in this country. But also, it has to do with holding elected officials and those who are selected to function in various capacities in this country. It's our job to hold them accountable Guyana has slipped for years into the abyss of chaos, anarchy, corruption, thievery, which is a part of corruption. And we've got a culture of lawlessness that has to be addressed in this nation. We've got a culture whereby those who are elected, very few of them are, and those who are selected by these people to sit in the House of Assembly, one person selects with APNU FC, one person selects the PVP, being, that being Jagdio. And we have got the culture by these the exhibited, where these cabinet members and others think that they could do whatever they want to in this country. We therefore ask the people, the people will move this country forward and will move these selected beings into a sense of accountability. It is not what it used to be. And we are hopeful that this strength would multiply itself across nations of the world and across Guyana at large, where Guyanese will rise to say, this is enough. This evening, tonight's broadcast bears record of degrees of arrogance, dishonesty, and hypocrisy that should cause every one of you to understand the need. Here in Linden, where I am, tomorrow, Yahweh willing, I shall be standing in front of the Mackenzie Sports Club in public protest against what I and others have now considered to be, and have realized others have, the gravity of the situation surrounding this Mecca, this sporting Mecca in this region. We have produced here multiplied international athletes of renown. We have produced significant major personalities in sports and we're now reduced to an environment where the PPP thinks through behaviors of people in this community that they could just walk into Linden and bulldoze us in reference to what they want and we must say nothing about it just accept it in the name of development as it's classified we have to take a stance I have with me in studio this evening my brother, of course, Jinnah, and he's all the way in Region 3, but he's followed and he was privy to what I'm sure he would speak to, which is a police officer, Officer Passad, obviously being sent to me and to have me removed from the Mackenzie Sports Club, a facility that I am paying to use as a member, a facility that's owned by the membership, as far as we are aware. 
police uh, and a police officer was sent there to remove me at the request of Trinidadians. This is happening in our country at the behest of the PPP Civic. And no member of parliament from the Aptin FC coalition has uttered a word, as far as I'm aware, about that atrocity where a Guyanese is being prohibited from recording to show everybody what is happening at the Mackenzie Sports Club. It is our right to show people what's happening there. There's no law in Guyana that says you cannot record or something at a, public, at a public facility that you own. But Trinidadians are here giving instruction. Nobody must record in that environment. So my brother Jenny will join me this evening and we'll have discussions. But before we do that, there is a, a video clip as well that will, that, will, that will show you the arrogance that controls Guyana and the six to control the world, and that is of the USA, what, that's what we call the neo, meaning new colonialists. They want to govern you not from the shores of your country, but from wherever they are, they want to tell you in your country what has to happen and what doesn't have to happen. So we'll share that clip with you, a very brief clip, but it will show you the arrogance of these people, that they will travel the world to impose themselves on other nations, and the weaklings we have here for political leaders, they would bow to anything because they believe in taking loan grants and handouts and, 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 and everything else from these people. They, they have caused us as Guyanese to be disrespected on an international scale because of their impoverished mindset and because they bow to anything. And we're going to show you what Kamala Harris went to Africa to do because Barack Obama started this foolishness and she is jumping on the bandwagon of the LGB, I don't call them T, there's nothing like a transgender. Transgenderism is an impossibility. You cannot change your gender. A man is always a man. A woman is always going to be a woman. There's nothing, there's no change in that. And so we show you the arrogance and the disrespect for nations of people, billions of people they have no regard for because the U.S. must have their way. And we have weaklings in our country who are bound to them. So, Brother Jenna, welcome to the People's Movement, of course. I don't have to welcome you here, you, you, you family. But thank you for joining. And you can unmute your microphone. Bid shalom to our viewers and Salam, as you would say, namaste means to bow, or I bow myself down. And Guyanese don't know to do that to each other, so I really don't say that to them since it's a form of hypocrisy in many cases. It's not a religious thing, it's a greeting. and I know, a Hindu greeting. We are distinctive from other people because we don't say morning or afternoon. We either say shalom, salam, or namaste, which all means the same thing, it's greetings. It means something. When you and, and we have to learn, those who are listening or viewing this broadcast need to learn that they have a history, a culture, and that culture and history has been dominated by went to into our countries and destroyed our culture, our history, and our our, our countries, our economies, our natural resources. And they continue to do so as we speak. Indeed, and so. we need to understand, as hard as this may be, it, we need to understand an, our history and the people who fought against it. And we need to recognize them as we speak over and over and over again. Those who were brought to this country, and we're speaking specifically about Guyana, who are brought from Africa as human beings. They were transported, millions of them died in the process. We need to, we need to let the other younger people understand across the board. And when I discuss, you and I discuss issues here, we're not discussing it as Afro-Guyanese or Indo-Guyanese. We, we are finished with that nonsense. We are discussing it as Guyanese who belong to a particular class of people who are oppressed and exploited. The majority of people in this country are exploited and oppressed by a 10% of the population. 
who consists of Indians, Africans, Guyanese, who are oppressing the rest of us in this country. Guyana is not run, and we'll come to discuss it when we look at what Kamala Harris is saying. Guyana is not run by the administration. The only man who stood up firmly against imperialism and neocolonialism was Mr. Burnham and Dr. Jagan, who supported him uh, openly. Correct. And they were able to control a large part of the economy. These matters are not discussed. They are not discussed. And the current leaders who we have who are running the country in the administration and in opposition, they're no different. There is no fundamental difference between the two of them. And we need to challenge this. You said it in, the, in, 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 in your introduction. We need to challenge all of them, not only those who are ruling, who are, who are in control of the economy and who are running the economy in the interest of U.S. imperialism. That's the important thing. Because the issue here is about oil, oil and gas. Yes. That's what it's all about. That the oil and gas is not distributed, is not controlled by us. So if it's not controlled by the people who have actually live and grow up here and develop this society, in hard times, we were, we were under enslavement for more than... 250 years people have to ask themselves the question why is it why is it that we are not able to control our resources and use it in modern times in the interest of ourselves and these are things that we need to discuss they are and we shall uh, someone please please help my brother um, he has to leave the broadcast and return because other people seem to be hearing pretty well, and he is not. So please send that re that, that that comment to Apostle Lambert. Type it so he he will have to exit and then return. He will certainly get sound in reference to us being here. Let me present you viewers with the broadcast with the with the video clip of Kamala Harris about which Brother Jin was spoken, and I encourage you to share the broadcast because we have quite a few matters of urgency to address or importance to address. But this one is going to give you an idea about the, I say again, the arrogance exhibited by the US. The UK is no different. Canada, no different. They believe, even France, they believe that as long as they have some economic hold on you, and they've got superior military powers. They have, therefore, the will to tell you exactly how you must even function morally. And Guyanese have seen this Granger, as a matter of fact, bowing to this foolishness. We have seen Ali having to bow to this nonsense. Look at what is happening here. Pay attention. Be treated equally. I will also say that uh, this is an issue that we consider and I consider to be a human rights issue and that will not change. The president and I had a conversation on this very topic, but the conversation was not about China as much as it is about the enduring and important direct relationship that the United States has with Ghana and with African nations. I will tell you that we are very clear and I will speak for myself and on behalf of the Biden-Harris administration, that the relationship between the United States and this continent and African leaders is an important one. There's a historical basis for the relationship, not to mention as we look forward, as all governments should, and recognize the unachieved, as of yet, opportunities that exist going forward. The median age on the continent of Africa is 19. Think about what that means in terms of potential. Think about the fact that by 2050, one in four people occupying a place on Mother Earth will be on this continent. And what that means. 
the trip that I have taken to come here, being here, is about recognizing the incredible opportunity with a sense of optimism about what we do now and how it will impact the world going forward. So this trip and this relationship, yes, we are concerned with security. We are concerned with what is happening on the globe as a whole. We are clear-eyed <coughs> about that. But this trip is motivated by the importance of the direct relationship between the United States and Ghana. And as I travel the continent, those countries as well. So there you have it. Absolute rubbish. Woman hasn't said absolutely nothing. And if you, you had played the whole thing, you would have I heard it. She said absolutely nothing that benefits the people of Africa and the rest of the world. Africa is standing up against US in yes. imperialism. And Africa is, is becoming independent, economically independent, and gradually taking control of their natural resources and use it in the interest of their people, which they have been denied for more than 400 years. So she comes there as a puppet, puppet of American imperialism, trying to reimpose what they did 400 years ago and denied the people of Africa of their natural resources, their skills, and, and, and their um, technology. There are millions of Africans who are living in the United States of America and Europe. And you ask yourself the question, why is it that they've had to leave their country to, to come to this part of the world to get a, a, a higher education and so on? When those countries have got the natural resources richer than any other continent in the world, why is it that they have to, they have to come to the United States? Look, Obama's father was from Kenya. Mm -hmm. And Obama has done absolutely nothing for Africa and nothing for the people, the African of the United States of America and the Caribbean. Absolutely. And he had two terms to do it. The only thing that you can say he did was to establish diplomatic relationship with Cuba, who is today, after 60 years, have a blockade by the United States of America, which was reimposed by Donald Trump, Correct. and continue under this Harris Biden administration. So what nonsense she's talking about coming to Africa to do what? But and then she's talking about about um, this transgender and homosexual and lesbian, uh, um, you know, freedom and human rights and so on. Look. You and I have no problems with people's human rights. People are free to have their relationship, sexual or, or, or oriental relationship with whoever they want to. That is their pri private and personal problem. But don't make laws to impose that so-called freedom and rights upon the majority of people in our country and in the world. Don't do that. And we have elements in this country political elements who have been trying to pass laws to try to please the Europeans and the and the Americans. And we should not allow that to happen. There's Just some uh, my brother Paul Lambert, well you may just re need to restart your phone then. If you're not getting through any of these things, you may need to restart your device and that should help you. All right? Um ah somebody said it. I want I want everyone to have a chance to hear clearly and this is one of our regular uh, sharers and viewers of the broadcast. So, Brenda's offering some help, just as I said to you. You restart the device and it should help you. Uh, Brother Jenna, uh, let, let's, because I don't want to dwell too long on, on, on the African matter. It's Kamla. Uh, since they've, this, this is not new, they, they, they're doing this, they're doing this consistently. Africa, by nature, by culture, doesn't lend itself to homosexual behaviors. They told Obama that from the beginning, that you came from, your father's from Kenya, you, you should know better. That's what they told him. You know this is not what we deal with. Obama left. 
when Trump came in, they weren't pushing the agenda because Trump does, isn't for that. He tried, he tried the best to weave his way to make it sound as if he is because he wants to be elected to some degree. But he said he's not for that. He repealed many things that they tried doing the army and so on. But when Biden came, Biden said that he's going to continue Obama's legacy. Now look at what an African descendant's legacy is. What is contrary to his culture? So they use him to push his agenda. Now, Harris said that she believes that this is a human rights issue. How can it be human rights issue when what you're doing is against humanity itself? And I, I am certainly, I am of the conviction, and I mean, you say it, but I, I have a viewpoint that differs slightly from yours. People are not free to do what they want to do sexually. Because if you, if you make that argument, then it means that a man is free to have sex with a boy. Because that's his proclivity. That's his orientation. No, no, no. What I meant is, let me correct myself. Please. They should not pass laws to make these things legal. Correct. Neither should have Because you and I can't go to, to people's bedrooms to see what they do. No, no, <laughs> That's no, what no, I meant. No, in reference to that, but hear me carefully here. In reference to what you're saying, we shouldn't go into the bedroom to see what they do. Why do you go into the bedroom to see if they have cocaine or marijuana? All of that. Go down. All, all of that. But see, I, I mean, even, even if one were to look at it from their immoral concept, because what has happened is that um, years ago, nobody could discuss this issue about homosexuality or lesbianism. No. If anybody knows that you are behaving like that, or you have tendency like that, you, you could be killed. You, you, you know that, right? You remember it, that? You will be killed today. But no, no, what I meant was that in certain societies, they are now trying to make it tolerable. Yeah. But, and, but the other thing, I'm sorry for interrupting so much, but the other thing is... That, no, that's okay. That's okay. No yeah. problem. Kamala didn't go to Qatar. <laughs> She hasn't gone to Saudi Arabia, where these things are punishable by death. <laughs> yeah. My thing is, the U.S. are the biggest hypocrites that I know. She goes to Africa because she thinks she has this, this. She she's been schooled in the United States of America on the white racist mentality that exactly. Africans are not human beings. You, you, if you read Walter Rodney on these type of things, they believe that Africans are not human beings and they school their people to believe that. We subhumans. Yes, yes. They, they school their people to believe that. So she has the audacity because Biden cannot go there and do that. So she's a stooge of, 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 of white, the, the white supremacy to go there and tell the Africans how they must live their lives. And she's been rebuked. Because they told her you know, in certain terms, mm -hmm. so in polite terms, don't come and tell us how we must run our society. I, I love it. I love what they told her, and it certainly uh, did well. Uh, Attorney DeSilva is asking, Brother Jenna, greetings, Apostle. And Mr. Jenna, will there be a launch? He has a rocket there of the People's Movement as a political party. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> so we have told them many, many times that if we are, if people feel that we are capable of, 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 of managing uh, the country or doing anything that is in their interest, they are free to, to, to elect us. We don't. We will not be selected. We are not to be selected. We'll have to change all these barriers of yes. people being selected because at the moment we don't have we don't have elections in this country, and that's no. something that, that we need to discuss really seriously how do we change this whole system whereby we will people have the right to elect whoever they want and not select at the moment when we are selecting people that is why we have the problem here and when you talk about democracy don't you think that the americans know about our, our electoral system they surely do and why is it they're not saying anything about them our democracy they it works think, why they're not saying anything about democracy People go out to vote. They're talking about uh, what you call the um, SOP, the, 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 the results. Mm -hmm. But then when the result comes, somebody who, has, who is in control of the list, 
he decides who is going to go to parliament, not the people. Exactly. So what, is, that, is that democracy? No. no. Does that happen in the United States of America? No. So why are they imposing why are they imposing that upon us? Why these two political parties, mainly the PPP and the PNC? Yeah, by the way, I I challenge um Aubrey Norton on this about about GCOM. And I wasn't able to tell him anything else about this selected list. But he knows also that he's caught in a corner because those members of parliament in the PNC. He can't tell them anything. Can't control any one of them. He can't control any one of them. So the question is, who controls them? The head who of the list. That's one man on the list. One man on the list. And he he thinks that, despite that he's sick, he thinks that he can come back into power and some 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 to him and Hartman. That's what they think. That this is the illusion that we, these guys have. This yeah, is the but... crisis that we have in this country. Thank you. I think I think <laughs> I think that one important and I thank Bernard for asking the question. Um, would you be prepared to 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 walk with the people's movement, Bernard, in reference to what the things Brother Jenna speaks about, which is we, we believe with all of our hearts that Ghana has to have a different constitution because this one works as a dictatorship. It doesn't work for the people of this country. There are many things in this constitution that are not being even considered. It doesn't work well in reference to representation because they're not true representatives in this country. What they have are selected people to function in parliament, but they're not genuinely representatives of people. And that is a problem we have in this nation. So if you, we, we know that the, 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 the local government is election is upon us. We'll have a separate broadcast to talk about that soon. Um, because I know that the, the, the people are clamoring for responsible leadership, for courageous leadership. I see Brother Jen in your area going to the bridge and so on, showing people what's happening in, in the community. And so many instances, I'm um, showing the, the misgivings of these political figures in our country. And we would like to highlight, as, as I said here on this broadcast, this matter regarding the McKenzie Sports Club and what is glaring in our eyes, dictatorship, disrespect for people, disregard by a selected leader, official. So let me show you this, Brother Jenner. This is the first time you're going to be seeing it. But I want you to take note of what Charles Ryan would have said. Now, I'll show you an image first here. This is the this this is a plaque that's in this McKenzie Sports Club. This pavilion was donated to McKenzie Sports Club by Demrara Bauxite Company Limited. I'm sure you're familiar with that because of your age. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So it's donated to. It's written on the plaque in in the in the club. This pavilion was donated to McKenzie Sports Club by Demrara Bauxite Company Limited by Demba in 1956. So it's clear we have a. a if you're yeah. done and so it's formally it's, formally opened by so and so oh right it's formally made for you formally opened by uh, the honorable farnham c a that, that, was that the governor no he was a member of the yeah, local member for local government social welfare and cooperative development all right now ramson in 2000 and 21, I circle it. Ramson rubbishes talk of government takeover. So I'm sure evidence now, so I'm going to protest tomorrow. Ramson said it belongs to the people of Linden, not the government. That's in 2021, a report by Royal Tony. This is called evidence. Ramson, the person in question, said that this facility is owned by the people of Linden because obviously the plaque is there. It's actually a club facility. But it's rich. for 50 years or so, this has been under the control of the people of Linden through the executive of, of the club. So you see that evidence. Ramson said it's rubbish. They are not trying to take over the sports club. I'll just show slides and then we, we, we'll have the conversation. Now look at this, Brother Jenna. 
according to the minister this, this after you said that now this is last year here according to the minister of sport charles Robinson, who met with some embassy executives on tuesday 11th october which is in 2022 in london the embassy is now owned by the government after the national industrial company incorporated limited nissil transferred it to the government of guyana why look at this in fact the sports minister said for the government to acquire a grant from the chinese government to fund the building of the pavilion, remember the pavilion now, owned, donated to Mackenzie Sports Club, to fund the building of the pavilion and new structure, government had to show ownership. Hence, seemingly, the announcement that around April last year, papers were handed over to show government ownership. An executive said this would be challenged. But did you know what can you say to this level of dishonesty? It's more, than, it's, more, it's, more than, it's more than dishonesty. It's uh, the question of they thinking that people would not know what they are doing. Because uh, a lot of Guyanese are not really keen in getting involved in ownership and control and all that type of thing. They just carry on with their daily life. But the fact of the matter is this. It's a legal matter because the the, the ownership of the property there is owned by the people of Linden who are members of the club. So that's the first thing. So I don't know the details about the the um, the composition of the the club that that actually manages. Because if it's handed over to the to the Mackenzie Sports Sports Club, right? Mm -hmm. Then it has a legal framework. It has a legal framework and that's what I don't know those details um, about the ownership. You see, ownership can, can be two forms of ownership. Is that a transported ownership where right. the elected body uh, manages the, the property and is owned by the, by the people? Or is state um, land and property that is also can be managed by the people themselves? So, from what you you've been saying is that this is a private club, and and government just can't and, and administration just can't take it over like that. But what they have done cleverly is they have they have they they seem to have gone through this process of treating it as a state ownership. But there's a lot of confusion here because Demba. As you know, it was a private-owned bauxite company. Correct. And then it was nationalized by the Burnham administration. Correct. And became Guy Mine. And they became Guy Mine. And I think then, I don't know whether it's the PPP or Hoyt sold it. When Hoyt, Hoyt is a guilty party in this whole thing, you know. So when and we will come to discuss that just now about the elite class in this country. And it got nothing to do with race, really and truly. Mm -hmm. But they, the, the two political parties, the elite within the society, is using it for their own purposes. So Hoyt, we have to go back to the history of it. How is it that the property became state-owned? It became state-owned when Mr. Burnham nationalized the bauxite industry. Which property? Speaking to the sports club, yeah, the sports club also. No, the sports, once the sports club, okay, the sports okay. Club, the, I, I don't know. I, I am speaking in ignorance here. Right. I'm I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm speaking in ignorance. Yeah, I don't yeah, know whether the sports club was related to the. Um, well, well, it says it says it here. It says it was donated. The pavilion was donated. Correct. To the Mackenzie Sports Club. Correct. In the Damarara uh, Bauxite Company. Okay, right, okay. good. So, so the Damarara Bauxite Company was nationalized. Right. The sports club was not nationalized because the sports club, the pavilion already been donated. It's a gift to the community. It's a gift to the community. So it's a charity. Correct. So it it's comes, not a state asset. It comes under the tr a trust. Exactly. And the laws that govern trust means that it's a community voluntary sector organization that's managed by the community and they should have rules and regulation 
in relation to the election of people who are managing the day-to-day -day management of it. And that's what we have. That's what we have here. So Good. when when assets, when, when the company would have been transferring assets, they transferred lands and so on that belonged to them. And that's what Nissil then absorbed after, of course, the PPP came into existence and they set up what they had to set up. Okay, so Nissil is now in existence. And no, Nissil was set up by Hoyt, you know. By Hoyt, sorry, Hoyt. Hoyt. And then, then we have the lands with Brassington story who's, who understood we, this. Let's, let's, let, let's pause a little bit so people understand. When Mr. Burnham died, Hoyt dismantled the state apparatus to control the, 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 the properties that were owned by the people in the state. Mm -hmm. Hoyt, 80% of that. Hoyt deliberately, if you read his speeches, you can get it at Austin Bookshop. He deliberately dismantled the infrastructure, the ownership of the, these things that were nationalized, the bauxite industry, the sugar industry, the timber industry, and so on. Hoyt dismantled it. Hoyt was the man that actually started the process of selling out our, our natural resources to foreigners. And Jagan, when he came to office in 1992, did absolutely nothing to reclaim it. And the reason for that, we, will, we can go into it in detail, was because for him to come into office, Jagan, he had to, he had to sing another tune then. He had right. to sing, we're not going to reverse the process, the economic process that Hoyt put in place. Yeah. So when, when Hamilton Green and them were fighting Hoyt and Hoyt expelled him, it was that battle between Hamilton Green, which was never explained. Mm -hmm. it, was, it wasn't, it was an ideological political battle because Hamilton Green, credit to him, was fighting to retain the status, the, 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 the economic control of our resources. And, 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 and Hoyt wanted to sell it off. Yeah, because Hoyt was lauded for this economic recovery program, he was yeah. among the, the only Guyanese president I know who was who was interviewed by Bernard Shaw, prime time on CNN and for the economic. But what people didn't see behind it was the US was praising him since he reversed what Burnham was doing. Yeah, and, he was he virtually handed he virtually dismantled the economic structure of our society. Correct. And another time we should discuss it because it hinged on what certain people in this country don't understand. And they're making the race issue a big issue, the biggest issue, when it's a class issue. Because the people who are the ordinary people, 90% of the people who are ordinary people, have lost control of their resources. So they this, were off. Yeah, so this right here, and that's where the sports club becomes so important to us here. We had within the community of Linden, what we call the mecca of sports, given to the, the people, essentially, but controlled by an executive body because somebody has to be in control of, us, of the operations and so on. 50 years plus, this has happened, no issue. Suddenly, we have got a group called NISIL, this, this state entity saying, listen. Explain what NISIL is, brother. Explain what NISIL is. Right. Because I, l l let, me, let me just show through this first uh, clip here. This, 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 this here. According to Minister of Sport, Charles Ramson, who met with the, some MSC executives on Tuesday 11 October in Linden, MSC is now owned by the government after the National Industrial Company Incorporated Limited transferred it. So this NISIL, this NISIL, and this entity called NISIL had been given power to control state assets and to do business essentially on behalf of the state. So that's why I spoke to Brassington as well. Brassington, for example, as you heard Rap, when he when had to go to court, is, was, was, was accused of listen, He could decide it in his position, all right, this land, 100 acres, because much of the, the bauxite, much of the was owned essentially by the bauxite company because they, they had rights for mining purposes and so on. Nissel took the control of those lands. So if you want a house lot, Nissel has to essentially, for most, most of Linden, issue that to you. Yeah, because Nissel controls state assets. Nissel was the, was the entity that Hoyt set up. Right. Him, 
him and this other fellow who was Minister of Finance. I can't remember his name, a short fellow. Um, uh, he was he, he was minister in Hoyt's government, the finance minister. He was also foreign minister in um, Granger's government. What's his name again? Uh, Greenwich. Uh, Greenwich. Greenwich. Well, Greenwich is one of these. He he collaborated. In fact, he, it was his brainchild. But the Americans brought him in to actually dismantle the infrastructure and sold out the assets to private companies. So Hoyt, with with him, uh, he actually wrote a book on that. He shamelessly wrote a book on on how he damaged the country. So these guys are are the architect of the dismantling of our economy, and that's why I'm quite concerned about this outburst of this tiny little group called the WP, because they made a lot of mistakes during that period. Okay. Burnham made a number of mistakes and so on. But his, if, when you look at the central policy and program that he was following, okay. was going to lead to the kind of economic development that will benefit the majority of people of this country. And the fact that they opposed him to such an extent, right, and caused, of, of course, he had to fight back. He had to deal with, with, with the WPA, which yeah, he called yeah. the worst possible alternative. Yeah. And, they, but, and but, they made some terrible mistakes, yeah. and, they, and and that's why that's why they collapsed because they were not pursuing policies and program, not understanding international politics. What was but, happening? Bringing it into into in uh, uh, the the, the Nissel matter because this is important for us to discuss and note here. Nissel has control of state assets to a great degree. Yes. Now, it has to be interpreted that Mackenzie Sports Club is an asset of the state, which it is not. No, it's not a, it's not a state asset. Fraud involved here. Yes. If it it's, is not. It's, it's a gift that was given okay. by Denver well, to the community. This is property. That's exactly what it is. And you need to find the constitution. You need to find the original constitution. that actually, And you can challenge them in court for this, which you have to do. The people have to come together. The problem we're having is that it's, I don't understand why people can't fight for their rights. These are basic rights. That's How could they, they allow this sit in Linden there and allow this asset, valuable asset, to be taken away from them in high daylight? It's not only demonstration. They need to take the matter to court and they need to pay a good lawyer to challenge them, file an injunction against them restraining them from actually doing what they're doing and let the matter go to court. That's the quickest way of doing it, brother. File an injunction against those who are there. Immediately, look, they look will at, have to court. Look, look at the trouble we have. Remember they said that the, the Chinese, they have to get money from the Chinese. See? The minister's post said for the government to acquire a grant from the Chinese government to fund the building of the pavilion, and the new structure, government had to show ownership. Hence, Nestle got involved because the easiest way to do this 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 this, this criminal transaction say, listen, Nestle, you own it, give it to us. Yeah, listen to this, listen to this. It's how stupid they are. <laughs> and they think other people are foolish. Exactly. The Chinese, the Chinese is not the Americans. No. The Chinese are were going to give to that club money and develop it free, of course. And it didn't need no government intervention. It's nonsense. Because the Chinese are doing, are doing it all about the place. The Chinese want accountability, what we're talking about. And so they want a structure that is there that, that can manage and, 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 and not steal the money that they were going to give. That's why in many cases, the Chinese bring their own experts to actually ensure that these yeah. things are being done. It's not that they want to bring outside labor. But because of the level of corruption by these governments, all over the world, they have to actually have structure, structures of accountability. So I am perfectly sure. And if you write to the to the to the Chinese embassy, the, and that's what you all should be doing, write to the Chinese embassy and arrange to go and see the ambassador, the Chinese ambassador, to find out exactly what the, what that what that um, 
decision was they made and how much money they were going to they're giving and what are they have they presented a plan of operation all of that they completely bypass the club and the management of the club i can't understand how that happened now the claim is that they met with executives and executives said okay go ahead now the executives saying they have no clue as to what happened the point further is this that the law which are present to us for us to discuss the law doesn't afford anybody the opportunity to make a decision for me without my involvement I, i'm going to meet this is where it speaks to the the, the 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 article of inclusion i read it for you the constitution of the cooperative republic of guyana the constitution of guyana recognizes the right of every person to an environment that is not harmful to him to his or her health or well-being and the duty of every citizen to participate in activities designed to improve the environment and protect the health of the nation. Access to information is guaranteed within the framework of the freedom of expression. No person shall be hindered in the enjoyment of participating in the management and decision-making processes of the state. This is just a, 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 a general yeah, on the basis of that, if you can use that aspect of the Constitution to challenge them in court. Now, I went to the club birth dinner to see what they were doing. Yeah, I followed because your I video. saw the video. And it turned out that Trinidadians are there. Yeah, I saw that. I, saw, I heard everything. I don't have the right to show you and other Guyanese what our money is being spent on or, 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 or what money is being spent on to, to upgrade our lives. Police, the police were sent because this fellow called Reason and Reason called the Trinidadian, the, the contractor, the, the foreman called the contractor who's a Trinidadian. The Trinidadian called obviously Ramson or one of them, and the police were sent to remove him from sports club. Now, now, how do we as Guyanese sit and have this happen to us? And that's what I'm going to protest because you, Todd, is now involved in this situation here. We have a minister, according to his position, responsible for foreign affairs. And there's a Trinidadian company telling Guyanese, even, even uh, what's his name? Robson Bent is involved in this. Because how can you have Trinidadians telling me that I don't have the right to show us all as Guyanese what is being done in our ground? That's ridiculous. It's un un unbelievable. And, and that's just happening because the people in Linden are taking these things and sitting down and folding their arms and not doing anything. Now, you know, I, I remember you. I remember they came out on this uh, COVID-19 and you saw the response that the administration now, had to now, If I may inform you, my brother, the members of parliament and others, they said that they raised the matter in the House of Assembly. That's Figueroa. Said he raised the matter in the House of Assembly. Uh, the, because we have to know what is being done to the facility. We have to know what... I don't even know what it looks look like. People in Linda cannot tell you today what this thing would be in, when it's done. Nobody can tell us what it would look like. But how but, is it that you allow that to happen? For, you went on and you all didn't know for so long? Exactly. Do you see the point? He said that he in, was in the House of Assembly and he raised it. Now, he didn't have a meeting in Linda to tell us what's happening. So that, shows, that shows the level of incompetence of these members of parliament. They don't know what their role and responsibility is. Look, he's a member of parliament. He goes to parliament. He has a, a senior, he's the chairman of the of the uh of one of the subcommittees of parliament, right? Yes. He has the he has the influence and the connection to speak to the minister directly about this matter. He ha that is his role, to, to, to have a meeting with the minister, to publicize it, to talk about it, to make it to look, so that people, I, if you didn't raise this matter, none of us would have known about it. That's the issue. So what kind of representation for Figueroa is giving to the people of Linden? And the people of Linden have to get wise. They can't That's have people like the, that. The public accounts committee. So more than anybody else, you should know. Yeah, more than that, because the money's... The budget has to come from the government. And these guys are sleeping. The PNC and the opposition are worse than the administration because they're there to supposed to actually 
keep um, these people in check, the administration in check. They, could you imagine that the, um, the, the, the this committee has not met for eight months? You saw the report what Gaetis here said. Committee. And the reasons, one of the reasons why <coughs> they're not meeting was because when they were in office, the AP and UAFC, they give, they give no account for their own spending. Correct. So that's a level of corruption we have among all these people. So none of these politicians really are truly representing the people of this country because there's no accountability. Yeah, but if, if but because I know that you in Region 3, you normally do your videos and say, well, uh, do that and others in the, they have to answer. And it's the truth. They have to answer. I have to answer. And he was very annoyed. He called right. me up and said that he was going to sue me because for I sent, uh, for send that video. And I, 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 I don't know what I said that implicated him, but I send you the video. You can have a look at it. But the fact of the matter is that the corruption that went on during the AP and UAFC and the kind of things that they did, well, it's, and I don't know how they have the gall to criticize this administration because this administration has more money to spend and more money to give away. That's the only difference. <laughs> but, the, but the people who, I mean, look at uh, Patterson, David Patterson. He was given gifts. He was, you know, he over $100 million was spent on the feasibility study for that bridge and nobody knows where it's gone and what, what has happened. So these guys, they... They in, in the public, they make a lot of noise to tell us, to, to fool us that they're criticizing each other. But at the end of the day, they none of them are, are, are being held accountable. They're not held accountable. And if you really take the matter to the court, you just wash away because you got lawyers like Nigel Hughes and them who come and defend them, spend millions of dollars they spend. They give him to defend them and find ways and means of getting off. So we don't have situations. I would be I would aghast if Nigel Hughes would uh, seek to defend anything of this nature in reference to, to, to these irresponsible people. I mean, there's they certain people he would separate because if it's considered a political move, um, uh, like Ugunsis matter, which is a political action as far as I'm concerned, because after political figure said, he doesn't know why Ugunsis is not arrested yet, that's when he was arrested. <laughs> to stop this, Ugunsis is a political prisoner. Yes. All right. Yes. Before we go to that and talk about that, this post cup matter is, is heavy on me. So, so I, my brother, I'm going to stand tomorrow morning at 7.30 in public protest. This is the beginning of the, of the fire for me. I'm going to stand there because I cannot see where we have elected officials in, 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 in Jagu and other people and selected officials in this community here who cannot tell me that they know or what I should say this would look like. So person is saying, let's let's support the development. And I'm, my question is, what does it look like? How can I support what I don't know? I don't know how much money is being spent. We don't know, and this is important because I think in Region 3, you can tell me if that happened. Person said, uh, to some contract they were happening, they said, no, people from Region 3 must work here. Your region, they said, we from this area, and we got to get work here. In Linden, We've got most of the people in that in that club are Trinidadians. <laughs> Imagine, but, but but the first thing we need to do is to get the facts right, and you need to get all the papers. And you need to get on board those people who are supposed to be in control, the, the who are elected members. A meeting, first of all, a meeting needs to be called by the people who are members of that club. That's the first thing. Yes, and yes. once you will have had that discussion. Yeah. You then right. take a resolution. We had the meeting, but if you see here, it's clear. Ramson said, the minister said, this is his, in 2021, MSC, the MSC, the Mackenzie Sports Club, belongs to the people of Linden. You're good. But like you, can use that, you can use that against him. Have to have any papers after this? Yes. If the subject minister states that this is the property of the people of Linden, what do I need a paper for? I, I, and he's a lawyer. My point. Yeah, he's a lawyer. He said, he's this that. Is not ours. He yes. will have to go to the court to actually defend that. That's of his course. way to stand up. So, I mean, you can demonstrate as long as much as you want, but unless you challenge them legally in the court, court of law, you're not going to get anywhere because it's a matter 
of, of, of involve the property which is not owned by the state and it's not owned by private individuals. What they're doing is to try to, to deny the people the right of the property, which is highly dictatorial. I can't find another word to describe it. It's highly dictatorial and the people have got to stand up. It is dishonest to say that it's owned by Nissel when Nissel controls state assets. Nissel yes. doesn't own G GFC, Georgia Football Club. Nissel doesn't own GCC. It doesn't own Everest Cricket Club. It doesn't no. own, and, and GFC and GCC are leased as far as I'm aware. Yes. Those grounds are leased land so they can play sports on it. Sports Hub isn't leased from anybody. And it's not leased to anyone. It's owned by, uh, it's, it's showed there. Yes, so it's owned by. A very dishonest act committed against us here in Linden. And I do not see myself as a representative of the people's movement being quiet and as a Lindener being quiet in the face of this glaring atrocity where we were lied to, where this minister said, this man said it is not the property of the government. Then one year after that, it became by some uh, some dealing with Nissel. That's not going to work. Because if he said Nissel handed over paper, so then I have to see that paper. And every Ghanese has a right to demand to see this, this paper they talk about. Because the members of sports club are paying dues. Now, how can I can I go to Nissel in Linden, with, where they have an office? And I will do that. I'm going to ask them to see the record of the sports club finances. Because if, if it's owned by Nissel and I'm paying dues, then somebody has to have a record in this city being paid. Yes, where's your record? Well, if you are paying dues, according to the club laws, they, you have to have a, a, a chairman, secretary, treasurer, and, uh, you have, and you have a bank account. So if you can produce all of that uh, to all the members who are, pay, who are paid up members, paid up or not paid up, it is it is a facility that is for the community. Uh, I guess you have rules, a constitution that governs the club and what it does and what it doesn't do. And the fact that that this facility has been virtually taken away from the people, they, it shows that the club does not have any powers. As it's taken away, it has been money has been pumped into it, and nobody knows who they're going to give it to after no, they repair right. it. The thing is, the, the, the essential point is this: if if Ramson, according to Ramson, <laughs> it's Nissel give it to the to, to the government, as they put it. Then my point is Nissel had to have been owners of it. And if Nissel is the owner of it, Nissel has an office in it. And the bridge, for example, has to report to Nissel in reference to the counting. Yes. I, pay, I pay for my vehicle to cross the bridge. The bridge has to give a report to Nissel. Now, if the sports club is owned by Nissel according to Ramson, I need to see in Nissel's office in Linden what money was contributed to them by sports club. Because Nissel has an account for every entity that it, it runs. Not, not, not only that, listen, there, there are two forms, three forms of ownership in this country. One, a private ownership where a man owns a house, owns land, you got transport for it, transport for it. Then there's, then there's a lease land, which if, it, if it's lease, that means that it's owned by the state. Correct. And I have that. Right. And then, then you have collective ownership where co-ops and friendly Correct. societies and so on people come together legally in a structure in a constitution that laws and so on that governs that and that is how the, the sports club is run by a friendly society i don't know you need to check the constitution they have to have a constitution and you need to check that out to see how it's being run who's in control and they do those, have a constitution. And the right. constitution clearly because they, they were supposed to have some funds fit to be upgraded under when Valerie Sharp was Minister of, of Housing. And the request by 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 her, I was told listen, you have to, to to amend the constitution to include representatives from the community, from the public. Now that was done. So you had the mayor and council represented, you had the RDC a representative from there, and so Essentially, they spoke on behalf of the people. Now, th the only way they could have reformed or amended the constitution, they had to have been one in the first place. So with Valerie Sharp, I think it was 20 something million dollars would have been released or, or, or earmarked for development. And I'm told, and obviously the record shows nothing was spent because I saw nothing done to the sports club. So we've got a, a litany of charges here against officials from both administrations. 
Yes, and also the officials who are elected representative of the club itself. I mean, what what do they have to say? Because if you, according to the constitution, well, I, I don't know what the constitution says, but you either have annual annual general meetings. We do have, and we have regular meetings as well. And then you have um, a report from the official elected people, and their accounts has to be presented, and by an auditor, account has to be presented and be sanctioned by the members who attend that meeting. So if all of that records you have, then that's your case. That's your case. And you can challenge it in court of law. I, I want you to see as a brother. And stop guide all them. the work. You can stop the work immediately with, if you if you file an injunction against them. Yeah, but the, the thing is, the thing is that I want I'm seeking and others are seeking to show all of Ghana and the world what we are dealing with in reference in, in this country. This but this yes. is to be yeah, I agree, I agree with you. Oh. And that's this is happening all over the place, not only yeah. Linden. They do whatever they want, that's yes. what we come out. Yes. We, do we don't care anymore. And let me show you this. This this is the final thing I show you in reference to this matter. Where just you spoke about this is an African descendant speaking here, as you put it, as, as people put it, connected to the PVP. He's supposed to serve as liaison officer between giving this the channel of, of the flow of communication between the, 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 the contractor, the government, the MSC club. So he's supposed to be the, the go-to man who knows what's going on. And in a chat group. Where I objected because I'm supposed to know what's happening as a member and as Guyanese. I, I read what he said, the, the main the main line, because I said we're supposed to know what's happening here. His response was, Y'all will get respect when y'all are ready to support. There's a PPP person here now. His father is or was the, the deputy for the for for, for, for uh, National Sports Commission. Now, do you see what we're dealing with here? So the PPP little little lackeys are now of the view that the only respect people who support what they're doing. And you can only get information on a public project if you support what they're doing. He's an idiot. Is that not dictatorship? Yes, because they're clearly not dictators. But this, well, this is a this is a point, uh, I, I mean, I've been making over and over again. You see, it's not a question of race. They, they get these lakeys, these shops, to, to support them on both sides. And they put them as just window dressing. To carry out their wicked behavior and ignore the rights of people. This is actually a violation of the people's rights um, to, to to public property. Is it, is it public property? And you have you have a constitution that governs it. You have all the all the papers there that I as I can see. So you have a case, a serious case. You can even sue them for damages. Because we 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 we, we plague with this situation where. Ali, serving as president, his official page published that this multi-purpose facility, it, which it was, you, you played basketball, hockey, football, cricket. Uh, I did track and field there. I, I wrote draft track cycling there. Volleyball. I mean, so many darts, billiards, pools, you name it, we used to play there. Table tennis and all of that. Ali then published a few days ago from his official page, somebody published it that this Mackenzie Sports Club is being upgraded to an International Cricket Council Stadium. Imagine that. Without, without telling you all that, you all didn't know that. Yeah. So you are in ignorance of something that you own and somebody else is telling you what, you, what they need to do without consulting with you, how you, what you need, what should be done, and how it should be done. But what That's does the law dictate? The law dictates that we have got the right to not just be consulted with, but to participate in. Actively manage it, yes. See, because Article of Law, Article 13 of the Constitution, Article 38A, Article 149C, says that we have got the right to participate in anything that involves our well being and involves the governance of the state. So even with NISIL, sorry, let me just show it to you again. Sorry about that. Is that is that a constitution, right? It, it's referenced in the constitution. You got in the constitution. What it's about me. your own? What about your own Mackenzie Club constitution? No, no, we have that. I don't have a copy of that, but I'm aware of it. Yeah, you should get a copy. That's very important. 
because I've dealt with the sports club for so many decades. And then I, of course I left Guyana. I, I, I was, I played many, many sports there. What I know is this, the club in itself, because remember, I think we have, um, oh boy, the word is slipping. We're prescriptive rights. Prescriptive rights. And just generally, if for 50 years I use a facility, for 50 years I've controlled a facility, for 50 years it's been established, and listen, by publication, this is published on the wall, this pavilion is donated to this club. It is understandable by law, essentially, that this is mine. Because yeah. for 50 years I've used it. I've controlled it and it's published that this is a gift to there's you. No, there's no question about prescriptive title because remember you've been given something. Okay. You haven't, then. You haven't occupied it and nobody has uh, under the under the law of prescriptive title. You had to occupy something belong to somebody else and the person never stepped into it and yes. use it. And and you were there for okay. more than twelve years. Correct. Without uh, anybody disrupt and you've been paying the rates and taxes. Right. But, right. but saying that then, in so therefore you have to go to the court to apply for prescriptive title. In right. this case, you don't have to do any of that. Right. Because right. this was given to you as a gift. Right. But saying this, yes. if if you want to talk about prescriptive rights, we've gone beyond prescriptive rights. Because for 50 plus years you're using a facility. You control a facility. Somebody says it's a gift to you. Yes. How did we lose this? Yes. Who can sign over a gift to somebody else? <clears throat> Exactly, you have all the rights here. Yeah, but I, I don't see any problem with that. I think, I think you will win the case, and you can sue them for for damages and all that kind of stuff. But I'll be, I'll be, I'll be streaming live tomorrow morning. Yeah, we willing? Um, well, we will test the 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 the, the, the um, solidarity and, and strength of the people if they come out and you 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 uh, you identify a lawyer who is going to speak on your behalf and file an action against them. That that's the only way you can um actually secure that place and then such an example for many other places to come well what I, what I, because persons are person of the view that if you oppose this then you're against development and it's just unfortunate people think along those lines i see you stood by the bridge for example you're not against a bridge being built anywhere you're against the 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 the, the, the man in which the funds are are misspent you can't just take people money and build one bridge. I, don't, I will. I will try and get videos what Dr. Dragon said when he was oh, president. Come and on. Here's what he said. You know what he said? Um, he said that in every community and any structure or or whatever is being built or constructed, that the people must be involved. Yes. In, in the beginning. In the very beginning, about what you intend to do. And and get them to be to consult with them in a meaningful way, take their views and opinions and ideas, and then they will because they have, at the end of it has to benefit and manage it. Yes. And, and none of that is being done at this moment. They just come in and do things, and people take it for granted. And unless people stand up for these very simple things, very simple things, and fight fight for it, the, the PNC has not said anything. Aubrey Norton. Has not said a single word or any of the member of parliament since you came out and made that statement. Not one of them have done exactly what or more than what you have done. None of them as a political that, party, they have not issued a statement. That, that's the thing, Brother Janet. This is happening what is called this stronghold, as they call yeah. it. Please. Stronghold. Now, how, now, do you believe that the PNC, as they put it, could go into any of the PVP strongholds, as they call it? Let's say Port Moran. Or Albion and dig up my on the citizen. Shut up and take what we give you all because of development. It shows that the total weakness of the PNC, that the leadership is bankrupt at the local level, at the regional level, at the NDC level, at the right at the top. Because if simple things like that are happening to a to, to a to a region where you're supposed to historically control and you're not doing anything, saying anything, there's no protest nothing writing a letter to the minister calling him up finding out whether issue a statement in the press issue a press statement a press conference how long would that take to do all of that now as you spoke to writing letters the 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 reports that that, that this person was written to ramson on numerous occasions by the executive to just have a conversation 
and just to see what is being done. And he never responded. Never responded. Because <laughs> he, he doesn't have to respect anybody. No, they have no respect. The only way you can deal with them is take it to the court. And even if the court decides against you, you, you take it to the high court and it end up in the Caribbean Court of Appeal. That's the only way we... Somebody about it today. <laughs> well, it says they talk about it today. Well, what did they say? What did they say, Diane? I, I forget I said that he raised it in the House of Assembly and he called he called the, the, the permanent secretary for Ramson uh, and, and said, well, you know, they, they need to have answers as to what's happening here. And it would be good to have a billboard Erected as in other regions to show the people what it is. Nothing has happened. But what? But has he, as a, as a parliamentary representative of Linden, did he call up the club and tell them what he's doing? How could he do things in their name without consulting with them, without talking to them, without have a meeting with them? What it's nonsense is this? We have and never, as far as I'm aware, and as far as I've been raising this issue, I've never heard two members of parliament, the regional chairman or the mayor, say, "Let's have a meeting." Because this is happening in our town. Let's have a conversation with the members of this club and the wider community because we've got funerals being held there, religious services being held there. As I said, it's, it's, it's a staple in the community. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a staple a, in the, the community. Talk ground. No conversation whatsoever. Nothing. Because the point is, and you've been saying this for so long, we've been saying this at this people's movement level. Representatives who are elected and who are selected, especially the selected set, do not seem to understand that they have a role to play in answering to the people. Correct. Correct. And that's, that, that must be driven home as forcefully as possible. You have to answer. You don't have to like me, as many of them don't, but you have to answer to me or get out of the office. So the, the, the people are so tribalistic in their behavior. You ask yourself the question, why is it when they, they, don't, they, can't, they can't think for themselves? That's the biggest problem that they have. They cannot think for themselves. They're so tribalistic in their mentality. Never mind how educated they may be. On, on both sides, I have that same problem. When I went and I videoed, because of, during my walking in the mornings, I have to come across that area there. And I videoed that thing before when they broke that bridge down completely. And it was left there for many months without being done. And then we gathered, then we gathered there with some farmers and they were very vocal that's the bridge that's the same bridge yes ah now i know yes right. i remember it's the same bridge and the farmers were extremely vocal and then the minister went to the farmers and abused them yes he went to their house and called them out and abused them this this deal that uh oh my goodness right and this guy called me last week. In fact, when we sent that video a couple of months ago, he called me and said that he um, got that video and that he was coming down to see the bridge, to see the, the, oper the operation there. Uh -huh. That he was going to call me back to talk to me about it. And I, he did call back. And then he told me that we should meet and talk. I said, no problem. I have no problem talking to anybody. and But he never arranged a day and time. And I met him when Irfan Ali came to Ruby back down. And mm -hmm. I said, so uh, when are we going to meet? And he said, busy, you got to go to Barbies and you got to go here. Gotta go. But these are the kind of people who we have a place there. He's no politician. He's there to fill his pocket. And when you say words like that, they sue you. They want to sue you. Well, how could you say that? How could you say that? Well, we we can prove it because that bridge could, with that money, and we up and now we don't know how much money. I will, I, I I was saying to some of the farmers there that would have cost more than twenty million dollars. Some of them said, no, said, no, 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 that thing would cost over fifty million dollars. Well, you could make three bridges with that, believe me, because the bridge that was there was a, just a flat bridge. And all, all the bridge was doing was nothing was passing under it. Nothing was passing under it. So you don't have to have, build a bridge high. They right. build the bridge high as if you're going to um to to to, uh, to to march somewhere. So when the vehicles have to come now with all that steel at the bottom, uh, they, they, they hike, they have to climb to come yeah. on top of the bridge 
And if you have a truck with a, with a, with a big load, it can't pass there, or 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 a trailer, whatever. A very so, wide. Vehicle. Yeah. It's now it's not wide enough, and it doesn't need a rail. It doesn't need these things. But an, an investigation needs to be carried out about first of all, and this is where people like Figuera should come in to, to question that. But but it's nowhere to be seen, not only in Linden, but any other part of the, of the country. So these guys are not doing their work, and people need to know that they that those kind of people should never be elected as local councillors, regional, or members of parliament. That's the problem we have. They keep, blaming, they keep blaming the admin this current administration for all kinds of things. Ask yourself, and we should come to discuss this Takuma thing. Ask yourself the question. Has David Hines and Takuma come to any, how, long, how often have they been to Linden? Have they taken up that issue? Don't tell me that David Hines doesn't know about that issue in Linden. Has he come there to talk to you? Has he come there to see the real residents? No, he has. Has he taken a photograph of what's going on? Has he put it on his program, like what we are doing. But all they do is shout racism and discrimination. Of course, people know that there's institutional um, discrimination because the state apparatus, the state that we that is controlled by all the administration, as we have discussed it, constitutionally, is a dictatorship. So we, the people, have no say in it. We can't challenge these people easily in court because even the courts are controlled by the by the state, right? So we get justice only when we take our matters outside of the court of the the country and go to the Caribbean Court of Appeal. Only then we get justice. So there's not justice for the people. And I have I have sympathies for what he said in not the words he used, but the fact that he became very frustrated about the fact that people are not people are not coming out and airing their views. Right. Even right. on civic matters like the Mackenzie Sports Club. You have to go there, do a video then get implicated with those who were in control of the situation there. The police comes there. And how many people came there when they were televising it? How many people came to the gate? No one. Your police can't do this. And, 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 and. No, nobody came. Right. Even when Takuma was arrested, nobody came. They knew that he was going to be arrested. Where's Norton? No group, no, no, no campaign group, no team. Nobody came to give him solidarity and support. So, so it's like you know, it's it's, it's just wasting time. No, because <laughs> Norton, Norton was at the same rally with Takuma, and Norton, I can't, I haven't seen him since Takuma got Takuma got arrested. Well, he's trying to distance himself from what he said, but he doesn't take away. This has not taken away the fact that. He may have said it the way he said it was 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 improper and was impossible for for that to happen because I mean you and I spoke about this. Look, unless you have mass participation to change the political and economic system of any country, unless you get mass participation, you're not going to be able to change it. No. But people shouting on the bandwagon as they have been doing over the years and having their little program, television program, uh, and uh, speaking out about things that are happening in the society. Unless those people are conscientized, the masses of people within their trade unions, within their religious group, within their sports club or women organization or youth organization, unless they become conscious and they collectively reach that point, where they have had enough of the system, it doesn't matter whoever is in ruling, when they would have had enough of it and decide that enough is enough, only then you can have major changes in the country. People like us can't be shouting all the time. I mean, the fact that I, we have limited resources and we go and we talk to people and we highlight these issues, it's, 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 it's a way forward. Because and, people tell me, when, when I went there, people say, look, I, you know, people of Indian descent, 
Mama, me nega tie for them people. Say me nega vote for them. Number two, they kind of way they treat us. They come, they bulldoze our places. They put bricks and make up. They not consult with us. They not tell us what kind of bricks they can put on our kind of thing. Why should we vote for them again? So the message, but you have to get concrete things to highlight, and the people are with you, or you are with the people. You most times it has to be you are with the people because the people are affected by the problem, and all they need. They need to take up their own leadership because the, the things are all they need is guidance. True, and that's what they're not getting from these True. people who are shouting uh, on the top of their, of their, of their. You know. But in reference to the Ogunsi thing, as as we, as we wind down, um, I I have said this over a period of time, over a period of years, that Jagdio Jagdio student said that if Granger is sworn in by Claudette, by the Chancellor of the the judiciary, he will make Guyana ungovernable. That's what he said. Yeah. Now, but... no, 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 no. He didn't say if everybody gets together, what happened? Jagdio made a statement that was a threat to the well-being of the state. Granger never saw that his man was arrested, and these things upset me. I didn't want to get so angry tonight. <laughs> Don't ever say Granger never get mad. <laughs> now Ogun says that, that listen. All we talking about we we, we being we being oppressed and so on, and there are those with the, with, the, with the ability to stop all of this. He never said anything about ethnic groups fighting anybody, but it was interpreted to mean that. Yes, yes, his interpretation. That because basically, basically, what what irritated what irritated the establishment is this: is that he's calling upon the armed forces. To take action against the administration, and and he knows, and everybody knows that if the armed forces were exactly. to take action, then that would be the end of the administration. That's true. That's a fact. But the, but what what he needed to do was to you you have to you have to raise the armed forces will come to the support of people when when they feel because they are connected to the people, their relatives, friends. Right, you know, children, grandchildren, and so on of the communities, the, the various communities, and if they, uh, if the people are mobilized to the point where they, uh, they, they've had enough of what is happening, then, then obviously it's natural that the armed forces, whoever they are, will actually take the side of the people if the people were to come out in protest. So basically, that's what he's saying. Look. We're gonna have a demonstration on the 12th of the of, of June, and we're gonna have a demonstration. He does not even know whether people will come out for that demonstration, but True. he's making that statement, right? right? And and we're hoping that the armed forces does not shoot us, does not come out, and 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 so on and so on. So that is basically what he's saying. Yeah, but, but the language in which he used to say it, but Jack and, and, and in a court of law, in a court of law, and I I told him. I mean, they should not follow him up in that kind of way because it look it's it's childish to do that. It's because it also violate the question of freedom of freedom of speech, the right for people to express their feelings, how they feel about a particular thing. He he did not dress and dress it up in sophisticated language. No. I mean, I could read, I could read for you, right? This is a book, right, written by articles put together by Walter Rodney. It mm. is the Russian Revolution. I'm sure they have not read it. It's a Walter Rodney's book written about the the Russian Revolution in 1917. And if they were to read it, they will see that the reason why Walter wrote that book was to show that a revolution is necessary yep. to make fundamental changes. To the overwhelming majority of peasants and workers and he went into great detail to explain how the russian workers and farmers and their political movement were able to mobilize the people and millions of people came out and they had a, not, a, not a shot was fired because the army and the, and the police and so on were on the side of the people correct and that is what we are seeing 
Nobody can stop a revolution when the masses of people... Look at what is happening in France. And the reasons why Guyanese are not... They're not showing it on their television here. No. Because they don't... They are afraid. They are mortally afraid. Look, the U United States of America banned TikTok. They banned TikTok, and they talk about freedom and Is rights it? and democracy, freedom Stop. of speech. TikTok, and, and the reasons why they banned it was because people, you and I, have had individual powers to actually make a video within minutes and send it out to the world yes. on any subject matter. And they want to restrict that, the freedom of people to say things. So anybody, anybody could actually make a video. They can come to your house, they can be on the street, they can be in their home, they can be in their bed, and they send it out on the internet. And that is what the Americans are trying to stop. Because, and the excuse they make that is that that's made in China. This is and, they, and they're gonna and the reason they're, they're made in China, so people are going to collect intelligence information from yeah. the United States of America. But, but none of the other countries have followed them. No, Thomas, you know, uh, uh Thomas in Robinson is in no gentlemen. My, Mr. David Hines in his program on Saturday evening apologized to the people and the opposition for not telling them that Tacoma would have turned himself into the police because they did not want to say anything. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. If you are calling you 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 are calling for protests against the issues that are affecting section the large section large section of the population, whether they be of African or Indian descent. There are large sections of the population, overwhelming majority of people of all races. What is the sugar workers getting? Up and now they have still live in, in two by two house lots. When you got the, the when when they must they're selling out the, the sugar lands and other lands to foreigners, the Trinidadians, uh, you know the Trinidadians are coming there. I mean you have your own experience with them. But in Wales and other places, they're selling them lands. Yes. And other places in in, in Latin, let them and so on. So the truth of the matter is that the, the truth of the matter is that you have that ruling elite in this country, and it doesn't matter which race they belong to. Look no. at Edel, Edel, Bishop Edel. He said that Jesus Christ, Jesus, Jesus Christ will come down and vote for the PPP. I heard him with my I own ears. In 2011, at Esquibo Coast, when I went to, yes. to speak on the television program there for the APNU, right? You have Ben, Brinley uh, Benson, who Oops. said, Brinley Ben, who was deputy prime minister in the Jagan administration in the 1960s, said, "You can stop, you you can um you can stop the sun, but you can't stop communism. Something of that sort." He said, meaning it's impossible to stop. Communism from coming. And look at what his son is doing. <clears throat> you have the foreign minister, Hugh. Hugh, what, what's his name? The foreign minister of Guyana. Todd. You Todd. You have the minister for culture, uh, the minister for sport, uh, what you call tourism, <laughs> right? And you have all these other people who they've put there as window dressing to show people of African descent that there isn't any kind of discrimination going on. The discrimination takes place. And let me remind people, we have an institutional racist and political gender and age discrimination that's been carried out by the state. And that right. state apparatus was set up during the Burnham era. And let's not forget that. Let's be fair about this whole thing. That's where it is. That is where the constitution of this country, which was written by Dr. Dr. Um, what's his name? Shahabuddin. Dr. Shahabuddin wrote that dictatorial constitution. The PPP came to office and they, they, they criticized the country. They called the constitution, okay. the constitution, all kinds of things, dictatorship and so on. Right when they came to office in 1992, Jagan said he wasn't going to use the aspect of the constitution for, 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 for um, wasn't going to use the constitution against people, but other people have done it. We see it right now, we are faced with that situation. 
So what do we do? The, yeah. question, is, the question is, what is to be done? What is to be done is that the Guyanese people need to get off their hands, their seat. And you don't have to get, you don't have to commit any violence. The fact of the matter is that you have got the economic resources at your disposal. You know, the African Guyanese are the greatest, has the greatest purchasing power because of the situation in which they live. They live in the urban areas. They live, don't live in the rural areas. So they have to they have to buy food and buy stuff, right, that are manufactured. And so they have purchasing power. If they want to stifle any administration, they have the power to do that. And, right. But the truth of the matter is you have bad leaders. You have people who they elect as leaders who are incapable or who have no commitment or loyalty to the people. That's the problem. And unless they get their act together, they don't need to commit any form of violence. They don't need to make statements that are derogatory. They need, the Guyanese people need to be united on the basis of race and class. And, and, and on, unless they begin to start to do that, like what we, you and I are doing here, that nobody can come to us and talk about this black man so also with you or, or the Indian guy, we don't know. We would never tolerate that. But we have to start at our own house and begin to start to build that unity on the ground. We have got to, to make the administration accountable. And the that's, administration is saying that. That's right. The administration is saying that. They're saying that you can make constructive criticism. Of course. You can make constructive criticism. So make those criticisms. Get into, into structures and participate. They're saying they want people to participate. Okay. You go to the area, to, to activities. Oh, yeah, oh yes, there are they're, they're people, there are sections inside the administration who are isolating people. They don't invite them to meetings. I don't get, I don't get invited to meetings. Oh, yeah, definitely. Right? That um, the, um, the minister went last week to a meeting to uh, do some follow-up. And, and I, I was never told, all right? I was never told, so I couldn't go there. So they have selected people who they invite for these things. But we, we must protest. So I call up them and say, who, who called this meeting? Right. Who was responsible for calling this meeting? And why was I not invited? You, you have to challenge the system. Exactly so. You have to challenge it. And you, like what you are doing, you are challenging the system. Why are no no other person in Linden coming out? How much that your thing costs and go and report or that they have their their little phone that I use to actually photo things and put it on the internet, put it on Facebook. Why don't they do that? They sit and they fold their hands and do nothing, and they expect people to give them leadership. People can fight for them. Oh, how much could we do? Tell me, how much could we do every day? So, so I, I'm certainly um, prepared for tomorrow morning, yeah, willing. I'll be there at 7.30 or before standing in protest. So they, it, it'll be streamed live. Let us, let us see how many people are going to join you in the uh, on the stream. And let us see how many people are going to physically go there. They don't need to, to, to commit any violence. No they violence. Need no. to appear there and to show solidarity and support. And they need to go to the Ministry of, if necessary, go to the Ministry of, of, you, of course Sports. Of and then you make your protest there. You have to get them a letter to take to the minister. And then you, you do these things. That's how you organize. Thank you. So, organize. Well, we shall. So, my brother, thank you, as always, for sharing the platform. Thank you for your candid remarks and the, and the input. Thanks to you, those of you who have been viewing as well here for your contributions. I'm certainly grateful that you share the thoughts you do. Uh, Mr. Linus is suggesting if we can, if we can only, if people can get people to understand, leaders can get people to understand that the constitution is our problem and can get all from Crabwood Creek to Linden to come out in front of their house on the main roads and hold hands. I think message would be sent, correct? I believe so. Right. We have to demonstrate that we have a constitutional issue in this country, a crisis in reference to the Constitution. 
that both political behemoths are using to their benefit. So thank you again, Brother Jenna. To the viewers, thank you to all of you who have been sharing this platform with me. Tomorrow morning, if you're willing to stand with me in Sports Club, I'll be there at 7.30. Um, rain or shine, I stand. Alone or with people, I still stand because I'm con convicted personally, as I was with Frank Anthony in his nonsense. I'm convicted about this because I cannot see the, 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 the administration, an arm of government, robbing a club and duping a community of people and being so disrespectful to us that we must accept whatever they say. I would never, ever be in a town where that happens because I know what will happen next. And I don't want to live in what will happen next. So thanks again, Brother General. Do Take well. Care. Take care. Bye, viewers.